Hello, everyone. My name is Mrs. Quarles, and I work at the South Blue Branch Library, and welcome to STEM for Families. Today's presentation is called, Ugh, a bug. How many of you like bugs? Raise your hands if you like bugs. I like bugs. How many of you have been outside in the yard and seen some spiders and maybe some ladybugs and beetles? and some crickets. Well, Miss Echo is here from Echoes of Nature, and she is going to show us a variety of very interesting insects. Hi, I'm Echo with Echoes of Nature, and today I'd like to share one of our programs called Ugabug, or is it ooh cool? So today we're going to talk about bugs. Now, when I say bugs, what are some of the things that come to mind? Maybe you said butterfly, spider, cricket, centipede. So they're all bugs because it's kind of a nickname. But we are going to put them into different groups. We're going to take a look at insects and arachnids. And we're going to explain what those are. So I am going to share some special animal ambassadors with you and they are going to be insects and arachnids today. We're going to take a really cool look at them. But first I'm going to share with you a toy. So when I hold it up I want everybody to say what kind of animal it is. Did everybody say grasshopper? So, our grasshopper is an invertebrate, meaning it has an outside skeleton. Where's your skeleton? Is it on the outside or the inside? It's on the inside. But if you were an invertebrate, you would have an outside skeleton, which would help protect you and help you to move. And if you were a grasshopper, you belong to the invertebrates that are insects. And there are some clues to help you know if it's an insect or something else. Can you help me count its legs? One, two, three, four, five, six. Insects have six legs. Insects also have three body parts. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Can everybody say with me, head, thorax, abdomen. So insects have six legs, three body parts, two antenna, and two compound eyes. Our eyes are called simple eyes. Not because they don't see well, they do, but I only see one of you in front of me. But if I had eyes like this grasshopper, you'd actually create a different picture in front of me because my eyes would be able to see in little facets or little different ways, which make it really hard to sneak up on a grasshopper or a fly. And I have two insects that I'm going to share with you, but before we do that, we are going to do a Build-A-Bug poster. So we're going to take a look down on our board. Now, right now on my board, on my poster, I just have three pieces of Velcro. Can you remember how many body parts our insect has? Three. Can you name them again? So we're going to have our head, thorax, abdomen. But this guy doesn't look like he can go very far. What is he missing? Legs. How many legs does an insect need? Six. Now, the legs on an insect are on the thorax. 
We also said he had two antennae and a pair of compound eyes. What kind of insect does he kind of look like right now? Kind of like an ant. Now, what would happen if we put wings on him? He'd look kind of like a fly or a bee. Not all insects have wings, but they do have three body parts, six legs, antenna, and compound eyes. Now I'm going to come right back and we're going to take a look at a live insect. So I have with me one of our ambassadors who is an insect. He is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Now I'm going to share him with you as soon as I move my hand. And here he is. And look at the different colors that are on his body. So his head is really dark brown or black and then a kind of a mahogany or dark brown and it goes down to a lighter brown. You can almost see where the body parts are. So this is head, the thorax is right here, and then this is the abdomen. And the abdomen is the biggest part of him. And you can see his legs sticking out on the side and his antenna. He does have the compound eyes, but you can't see them because they're kind of small on his head. But some really cool things about him. You see how the antenna are kind of moving around a little bit? Hissing cockroaches use their antenna to help them to smell. Some antenna are used for feeling, some are used for smelling, and he's waving them around a little bit trying to figure out where he is. Should it be feeling like he's in danger? Which he's not. He's perfectly safe. Now he looks like he has a ginormous head with two bumps on it. This is actually like a mask and these are horns on it and that's how I know it's a boy. If this was a girl Madagascar hissing cockroach, she'd have that mask but she would not have the big horns on the top. They would be flatter. Do you notice the little dots on the abdomen? They're on each side. Those are called spiracles or breathing tubes. So we breathe through our nose and mouth. Can everybody take a breath in your nose or your mouth? And we're breathing with lungs. But if you were an insect, you're not going to have lungs. And you would breathe through these spiracles. Now they get their name hissing cockroach because when they feel threatened, they push air out of those spiracles. And I have a second, I have a female, I'm going to see if she'll make a hissing sound. I'm not hurting her, and she's just pretty much telling me, hey, back off, give me my own space. And sometimes in the colony, they will do that just kind of like we do with our brothers and sisters or friends that we just need a little space. But you can see on her she has that mask but she doesn't have those big horns. And if you also take a look at her antenna, her antenna are thinner and more delicate looking. She does use them to smell but the boys have those feathery antenna to pick up the pheromones from the females so he can find them. Now a lot of people think cockroaches are really really dirty and yes they can cause issues but Madagascar hissing cockroaches don't live in people's homes and they don't want to and we have some native wood roaches that prefer to be out in the wood pile and in rotting logs. Now imagine if you were eating a peach or a pear and it was really juicy and you got that juice all over your face and your hands and then you went outside to play. Would you get dirt and stuff all over your hands and face maybe from leaves and dirt playing around? Yeah, that's why it's always a good idea to wash our hands and face after we eat. 
Now, when he's eating one of those overripe fruits or vegetables, they're going to get fruit juice on them too. But they don't just go running around afterwards. They actually groom themselves. They'll groom all their legs. They'll clean their antenna. Because if you can't smell for danger, or your legs are all sticky and you stick the stuff, can you get away? No. So they're actually pretty clean, but they do kind of get a bad rep. So I'm going to put him back. So we have our three body parts. Head, thorax, abdomen, six legs, three on each side, antenna, and compound eyes. Now, Madagascar hissing cockroaches do not have wings, but some roaches do. So I'm going to put him back, and I'm going to bring out another really cool insect. Now, this insect looks kind of like a stick. All right. So our second insect that I'm going to share with you is called a Vietnamese walking stick insect. We have walking sticks here in Maryland. They're called the North American walking stick insect. This insect is still a young one. It's going to get a bit longer, but she right now is about the right size for our native ones. And if you take a look, she is trying really hard to pretend that she is a stick. She's got that long skinny body and then like little twigs sticking out. These are actually her first pair of legs. Her antenna are right here. And you might be able to see black dots. Those are her eyes and her mouth is too small to show on this. But you can see she's got those six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And even though she looks really long, she does have three body parts. She's got her head, and then her thorax are where the legs are, and then the end is her abdomen. She is an herbivore, so she's going to eat plants. Our native walking sticks are going to eat like oak and maple leaves and other leaves. This one, uh, we are able to have her eat romaine lettuce. So unlike our Madagascar hissing cockroach, which is an omnivore, eating both plants and meat material, this is an herbivore eating only plants. Insects are so cool. They come in so many different shapes, sizes, colors, patterns, but they all have the same clues. They all have six legs, three body parts, antenna, and compound eyes. Some have wings and some do not. And the female um, Vietnamese walking stick insects don't have wings. The males do. Let's see if she'll move just a little bit. She is trying so hard to be a stick. Notice how she made that go right in the front. Sometimes they'll sway, trying to make be like a leaf in the wind. There we go. So you just don't think I have a stick sitting on my hand. There we go. So when you find caterpillars outside, they are also insects, even though they look like they have lots of legs. They have six true legs, and then they have pseudo feet or false feet. And she is trying right now, our Vietnamese walking stick insect, to try and find a branch to climb up on and to go hide. So I'm going to put her back. And then when I return, we're going to take a look at what makes an arachnid. All right, so now we're going to talk about arachnids. When I say that word, what do you think of? Did anybody think of spider or tarantula or jumping spider, scorpion? So I have a toy 
spider that I want to share with you first because no live spider is going to let you hold them like this. So there's some differences between our arachnids and our insects. Let's first count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So arachnids have eight legs. How many body parts do they have? One, two. So they have a cephalothorax and an abdomen. Now cephalothorax are just head and thorax smushed together. Cephalo is Latin for head. O is kind of like and. So it's head and thorax. And they call it cephalothorax. Now these two shorter parts, those aren't legs, they're pedipalps. So these come right out at their mouth and they help them to feel and to kind of grab. On the toy you can't see it, but they would have fangs and spiders might have zero, two, four, six, or eight eyes. So arachnids are pretty cool. I bet you guys can sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider song. Can you sing that with me? And you're probably going to do it way better than me. So, itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the spout again. Awesome. Remember how we made our insect poster? We are going to do that with our arachnid. So we're going to focus down to our blank poster. Now, what body parts do we need? We're going to need our cephalothorax and our abdomen. Now this poor spider is not going very far because it's missing what? Legs. How many legs is it going to need? Eight. So our spider legs are attached to the cephalothorax. Sometimes you will find toy spiders and the legs are on the abdomen because with some spiders the cephalothorax is actually smaller than the abdomen but they belong on the first body part. What else does the spider maybe need? It needs those pedipalps. It's going to need those mouth parts. Now right now we could stop right here. We, maybe we have a blind cave spider so it would have zero eyes. But what's the max number of eyes that a spider could have. It's going to have up to eight eyes. And depending on if the spider is a hunting spider, like we'll call this my pink legged jumping spider, it's going to have six small eyes and two big eyes as a hunting spider. If this is a spider that builds a web, and I bet all of us have walked through a web at least once, those spiders have eight small eyes because they depend on the vibrations of their web catching their food and running out and grabbing them. But hunting spiders like jumping spiders and wolf spiders go looking for their food. Now I do have a real live spider that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to move this over and bring out our tarantula. Now I'm not taking the tarantula out of the container because they can move pretty quick. But I want you to take a look and compare it to our toy tarantula. So they're about the same size. The tarantula that's in the box, this one is called a curly haired tarantula. And that's because the tarantula hair the ends of it look kind of curly like curly hair. Now calling it hair on the tarantula it's not the same as the hair that's on our head or our arms. 
if we looked at them through a microscope they would look really different arachnids are carnivores so they eat only meat so a tarantula might eat crickets smaller spiders scorpions millipedes centipedes some really big spiders like the goliath bird eating spider might eat something as big as a hummingbird but you can see the eight walking legs and on the ends of these legs the hunting spiders have two hooks on the end of each foot if this was a spider that builds a web and sits on the web they would actually have three hooks on the end of each leg. The eyes are up on the top of the cephalothorax, and then there are those pedipalps. Now I'm going to put this one back, and I'm going to pull back over our spider poster. Because I want to transform this poster into an arachnid cousin. So, somebody that's related to spiders and tarantulas, but doesn't really look like one. And I'm going to take out these finger-like pedipalps, and I'm going to trade them for this. It looks like they have pinchers. And we're going to stretch that abdomen and create a stinger or a telson. What arachnid does this look like? Who said scorpion? So I have a toy scorpion I'm going to share first. So our toy scorpion, eight legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This abdomen that's been stretched to a tailson with the stinger on the end and then two pinchers and these are pedipalps they're actually coming out of the mouth area and they have eyes right about right here so I do have a real life scorpion I want to share with you my toy scorpion is actually bigger than she is she is called an Asian forest scorpion And here she is. She's shiny black. You can see her pedipalps are open just like with the toy. And that is her ready position. Because she's not sure what's going on. It's really bright where we are right now. And she likes to be where it's dark. And you can see her tailson is in the ready position too. And she's going to be able to catch food with those pedipalps. And actually, we're going to do an activity right now, and I need your help. So I want everybody to pretend you are a scorpion. And it's daytime right now, so what are scorpions doing during the day? Sleeping. So everybody go sleep. And now it's nighttime. And you are a very hungry scorpion. Now, do you think you're going to run out really fast trying to find food? Are you going to be sneaky and stealthy? You're going to be sneaky and stealthy because not only are you looking for food, there are other animals out looking for food too. And you might be on their menu plan. So we're being sneaky and stealthy. Can you put on your petty palps? And we're being really quiet, moving very slow. And oh, here comes a big, fat, juicy cricket coming our way. Everybody freeze. Now slowly, slowly, open up your petty palps. The cricket does not see us because they're looking for movement with those compound eyes. Our eight eyes also look for movement, but it's coming closer. We're being nice and still. Now it's close enough. I want everybody to reach out and grab it. Now, turn it like a hot dog and eat it all up. Now, did you use your stinger when you grabbed that cricket? No. So, kind of
kind of imagine when you were little, could you catch a ball as well as you do now? And do you think if you keep practicing when you're older, are you going to be able to catch and throw a ball better than you do now? Yes, because you're practicing. So when our scorpion hatched from an egg, we were only about yay big, maybe about a quarter of an inch long. Do you think as a baby scorpion she could catch crickets really well? No. So she's going to use that stinger more to be able to get her food better. But as she is older, she doesn't really use her stinger anymore. Now, if you were a scorpion resting under a log or a rock or under bark and something disturbed you and it was big, do you think you might use your stinger then? Maybe, but not to be mean, but to protect yourself. And if you were a scorpion scientist, do you think you'd go out during the daytime or the nighttime to look for scorpions? You'd go out during the night because that's when they're active. But you wouldn't use a regular flashlight. You'd actually use an ultraviolet light because these arachnids fluoresce under black light, which is really cool. So, and she's gotten a little bit more relaxed figuring out we're not going to eat her. Today, we got to see two different kinds of insects. And how many legs do insects have? Six. How many body parts do insects have? Three. Can you name them? Head, thorax, abdomen. And they might have antenna and compound eyes. But what does an arachnid have? How many legs do spiders and scorpions have? Eight. How many eyes can they have up to? Eight. They might have zero, two, four, six, or eight eyes. How many body parts? Two. And they have that cephalothorax and abdomen. Can everybody make your fingers into a spider? And you can do your itsy bitsy spider. Cool. I love reading about insects and spiders and doing songs and stories and crafts. I hope you find some at the library or through ebook and I hope you have a wonderful time looking at spiders and insects and other invertebrates. Thanks for joining us. Wow, wasn't that fantastic? Give Miss Echo a great big hand. Wow, those are some amazing insects. The hissing cockroach, did you hear it hiss? I had no idea that cockroaches can hitch like that and how big it is. And the grasshopper, wow, there's so many bugs. Thank you so much, Echo, for sharing all of your bugs with us. So now, um, to learn more about bugs, you can visit our website at www.pgcmls.info. And on our website, you can find all kinds of books that I have right here right now. All kinds of books about insects. You can find some electronic books to read, fiction books to read, nonfiction books to read. I have listed here, there's one about hissing cockroaches. It's called Far Out and Unusual. <laughs> How about a cool pet for a cockroach is, is a cool pet. And there's also books about spiders and grasshoppers. Oh, and there's the walking stick. Yeah, a good trick walking stick. There's all kinds of books that you can find at the library. You can find them as electronic books or you can, you can reserve some of the books and then you can make an appointment to pick them up. So remember to go to our website at www.pgcmls.info to go in our catalog to find some very interesting books about bugs. And also visit our website for some more programs um, for STEM for families. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you had as much fun as we did. And thank you again to Echoes of, from Echoes of Nature for her presentation of all those amazing insects.